rise above yourself and grasp the world. In his spare time, when he wasn't post postulating pi, Archimedes said those words some 250 years before the birth of Christ. He said, rise above yourself, not rise above others, but rise above yourself. Because I think that he knew that the boxes that we construct for ourselves are far more dangerous than those that are constructed for us by society. Society does plenty to limit us, whether it's classism or sexism or racism or lack of social mobility. Society does plenty to keep us from becoming what we actually would want to be. For most of man's history, only the very few had a chance at actually achieving their potential. Even as relatively recently as the 1770s, Thomas Jefferson wrote about the self-evident truths and unalienable rights of life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Sort of ironic coming from a man who was at the top of Virginia society and a slaveholder. Now, we've come a long way since the Declaration of Independence. Now, we have a long way to go, but we have come a long way, largely through education. Now, I'm a teacher, so you have to expect that I'm going to have a plug. Whether it is being in a schoolhouse, which is the closest thing that we have to a meritocracy, or reading a book, or surrounding yourself with friends that will push you, we have come so far, and we now have true opportunity to become what we wish to be. But that's where our own boxes come into play. Whether it is fear, our own comfort zones, our own inhibitions, we have our own limits. And we limit ourselves because they are safe. Comfort zones keep us safe. They make us feel good, warm and fuzzy. But they also keep us from growing. Typically, it's fear of failure. I offer myself as a bit of a, an example of this. I'm terrified right now. I really like this thing because you can't see my knee shaking. <laughs> this is not my venue. Now, you might think of it as irony, and you might think I'm kidding. I get up in front of students on a regular basis. They can tell you. And I preach my history and I do my thing and I do my little dance and I am perfectly comfortable in that space. This is not my space. Not at all. But how can you say no when somebody says, would you like to do a TED Talk? Yes. Of course, yes. How can you say no to that type of opportunity? Fear of failure is something that we have to do something to overcome. It's really about perspective. Elon Musk, who is a founder of Tesla Motors and SpaceX, it's a private space company if you've never heard of it. He says that if you're not failing, you're not innovating enough. Now, these are obviously words that he lives by because the last time that SpaceX tried to successfully return one of their craft unmanned to Earth, they had what Mr. Musk referred to as a rud, a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. In other words, now that's perspective. That is perspective. A run. If you're not failing, you're not innovative enough, 
when Thomas Edison was doing his work on the light bulb, he failed all the time when he was trying to come up with the filament that he ended up using. He kept failing. And people asked him, why have you not just given up? How can you stand this? How can you take that much failure? And Edison just looked at him and said, I haven't failed. I've just found a lot of different ways to not make a light bulb. It's all about perspective. People will tell you, if you believe it, you can achieve it. That's bull. <laughs> I would argue that if you don't believe it, then you can't achieve it. You still got to put in the work. And you have to aim high. In the 1932 Olympics, uh, not Olympics, it was the um, World Series, Babe Ruth, who strives to the plate, is third in it. And very famously, he points, calls a shot, hits a home run. Now, I would argue that he wasn't trying to just kind of make it into the outfield. He wasn't trying to basically knock it over the wall. He was aiming for the guy in the back row with the hot dog. You have to aim high. You have to be willing to do great things. It's okay to be afraid. It's okay to shake. That's okay. As long as we are afraid in the pursuit of great things rather than of the pursuit of great things. People have been coming along throughout our history trying to show us the way, trying to talk sense into us. Plato said that most people, most humanity, were people living in a cave, literally chained to the ground by bonds of their own ignorance. And it was only the few that were willing to use some introspection, look within, educate themselves. Only they were able to stand up, break those bonds, and step into the light of possibility. We have to have perspective. We have to get past our fear of failure and see it for what it actually is. It's simply a step in the learning process. What can you learn from success? Failure is part of the learning process. There's no need to be afraid of failure. We have to be willing to look within, because that's where the greatness is. The unexamined life is simply not worth living. Socrates knew that. He professed it openly, and not surprisingly, the people in Athens killed him for it. We aren't nice to our prophets. We never have been. So please don't kill me on the way out of the door. Our prophets are still around. We're, there are still plenty of good examples of people living today that we can look to for guidance about how to break our own boxes and get out and do what we really need and want to do to make ourselves what we really want to be. Stephen Hawking. Now here's a guy who is literally locked within his own bodily prison. And rather than collapsing in on himself, as most of us probably would, this is a guy, this is a guy who uses his only tool, the only tool that he has available to him and he uses his mind to explore the vastness of space and time. Those are the types of examples that we have to follow. We have to look within, work hard, 
see failure for what it is. We have to rise above ourselves and grasp the world. Thanks.